Welcome back to the misadventures of Jason. Really appreciate all you guys and gals out there. And uh, wanted to share with you, um, not quite the inaugural smoke, but close to it. It's the second smoke of the pipe that I made. And what we have uh, decided to smoke in it, the inaugural blend, if you will, um, which is what I smoked in it for the very first time, um, is some Sam Goweth 1792 Flake. We can see there on my jar that I tin that was tinned uh, in June, and I jarred it a couple weeks ago here in November. And uh, now I am ready to dig it out. So I want to show that flake to you. Believe it or not, this is actually it's a little dry. Um, but mainly because, let's see here. You see that? Um, as I was going through the square tins from Sam Goweth, which I don't trust, um, a couple of those tins that were in the cellar um, didn't have a good seal. So there it is. It's like beef jerky. Uh, it definitely has a, um, a scent of flowers or something on it. So I'm just going to kind of rub this out a little bit. Like I said, it is a little bit dry. So it means it should smoke pretty well. It's not crunchy. Just a little dry. So we're going to rub that bad boy out. It's just such a nice, dark, almost black color. So there it is, rubbed out. And we're just going to go ahead and take this and Stuff it in. It's honestly my favorite way to smoke a flake is when it kind of breaks up into those longer um, pieces. Now I do like to do a gravity tamp a little bit. And then I'm going to need to get a couple lighter bits here. So, this is only the second time I've ever smoked this pipe and this blend. And I tell you what, my first impressions on this blend were off the charts. Alright, so, probably fairly loosely packed in there. It's not too tight. Got a little bit of leftover. Put in the jar here. So I'm gonna get this fired up and I'll be right back. All right, here we are. So, this uh, is a very deep bowl in this pipe. So I don't know if I ever, I'm ever gonna even actually get it filled up all the way. I've got probably a quarter of an inch of the uh, top of the bowl, not, um, you know, exposed, no, no tobacco on there, which is okay, especially when breaking a new pipe, doesn't have to be, uh, packed all the way up for sure. But, uh, mm. So the pipe is a, you know, it's it's relatively heavy. You know, there's a there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, briar there, uh, but with the bend in the stem, it hangs pretty well, and um, you know it's got we've got a good lip here on the on the saddle bit here, and uh, so it actually uh, it's quite comfortable. Just leave it in the mouth. It doesn't feel overly heavy at all. Um, 
like you would expect it to when you feel the heft of the pipe in your hand. That 1792 flake from Sam Goweth is fantastic. Um, my understanding is it's got a uh, Tonkin bean topping. And I think I really like it. Pairing my pipe with good old tap water. Hmm. You know, this very well could be um, that special blend that I've been looking for. And if any of you have been watching my channel, you see I purchased quite a bit of tobacco because I've been looking. Of course, I also haven't tried very much of it, so who knows? There may be some other stuff out there that I really enjoy. But that brings me to today's topic. Unicorns, specifically that unicorn blend, that blend that we're all looking for, that so many of us strive to find, that we love, we just can't get enough of. This may very well be that unicorn blend for me. Although, I will say that, you know, it could just be the Lakeland Essence. Um, I had some about eight year, eight to ten year aged Louisiana flake the other day. Oh my gosh. Uh, if you like perfume, <laughs> that was something else. That was, um, it was like standing in the department store, you know, JCPenney or Macy's or Dillard's or whatever you want to call it. And uh, right there at the, at the ladies perfume counter. And uh, it smelled just like that. And tasted just like that. All the way to the bottom of the bowl. And I kind of liked it. I kind of liked the perfumey flavor. Now this has a little bit of perfuminess, but not the, not the same um, florally you know, petunias and daisies sort of uh, notes. Who says that Tonkin bean? I mean, I'm not even sure what a Tonkin bean is. But it definitely has a sweetness to it that is really, really enjoyable. So much so that, let's see here, it was four nights ago that I last smoked this pipe with this blend. And I have not been able to get that experience out of my head and I've probably had I don't know uh, maybe seven or eight pipes since then but I just keep thinking about man I gotta get some of that 1792 and have that again It is really, really good. So those unicorn blends, those blends that, you know, are just out of this world, um, maybe hard to get, maybe not in production anymore. I know there's a lot of people that swear by the McClellan blends, the Frog Morton series, um, Christmas Cheer, some of those different blends from, from those makers, the old Dublins, Dublin, uh, Dunhill. Keep letting it go out could just be the pipe you know it was made by a very rank amateur
or that unicorn blend could be just a blend that um, it's the magic blend for you or it's a magic blend for a certain pipe you know 1792 has been fantastic in this pipe I have a, a Savinelli Series 3 that smokes Virginia's like a dream. I've been smoking Sun Bear in that bad boy um, and loving every single bowl. So, you know, I haven't even bothered smoking Sun Bear in any other pipe because that pipe just smokes Virginia's so nicely. You know, I've got a couple other pipes that, uh, you know, my country gentleman smokes everything well, it seems. Especially those heavier lot of Kias, those navy blends, you know, the black frigates and pirate cakes and, and some of those blends. Um, so maybe that unicorn blend is the perfect blend for the perfect pipe. Seventeen ninety two goes really, really well in this pipe. I'll try it in some other pipes. You know, I'll probably try some other blends in this pipe. Although, you know, I don't know that I necessarily want to put a lot of Kia in it. Um, but you know, I'm not opposed to it. It's just a slightly different seasoning to the pipe. That's all. So leave a comment down below and let me know what you think about unicorn blends. Do you have a blend that is absolutely just a marriage made in heaven with a particular pipe? Or it's just that, that one blend that you just can't get enough of? Or it's a blend that um, you used to smoke or used to smell and you can't find anymore and you just would give, give anything your left hand to, to be able to get it again. I'm curious what everybody else thinks about what unicorn blends are. I think if it's a great smoke and a great pipe and it's an enjoyable time, it works. And this works. Now, the Sam Galloth blends are hard to come by here in America. And I was lucky enough to find the tin, all the tins I have of Sam Galleth from the local brick and mortar. I did go back there after my first smoke of this pipe and they had all the other blends from Sam Galleth, but not the 1792. I was so disappointed. that's okay because there's plenty of other blends out there for me to try I've got like 89 different unopened tins and jars in my cellar so I'm sure there's plenty of awesome stuff in there and uh, I'm looking forward to trying them all so this is the first take of the 1792 by Sam Goweth and I'm loving it absolutely loving it if you can find some for yourself pick it up it's probably worth the cost and uh let me know what you think about it because I'm really, really enjoying it. And I can see why it's such a popular blend. So, uh, appreciate you guys tuning in and gals. And uh, stay tuned for more misadventures of Jason. <laughs>